Hey everybody, what's up? It's Saturday. Um, still Saturday where you are, I'm guessing. Um, first of all, before I uh, go on, I want to show you a, a, a new gadget. Um, we, we looked at, at this next to DI gadget, um, this one, uh, the other day, and uh, I'm in love. Um, this is just a gadget that um, is just an incredible uh, solution for um, actually backing up your photographs uh, with ease, and with a, a flick of a switch, uh, inserting a card um, when you're in the field. And it's, it's a light solution. It backs up raw files. It has um, as much space as you want to put into it. I did talk about that. The other day, you'll see um, uh, one of my streams. It's labeled New Gadgets, and you'll, you can find that there. There will also be an unboxing video coming up shortly. Um, it is in the process of being edited, so I will uh, get that link to you for that, too. Now, I did want to talk about another product. Um, th the mouse I had been using was, was good, but it was primarily uh, a gaming mouse. And for a long time, I've been waiting for a really good photography, uh, Photoshop editing um, mouse to come out. They did it. So I did my research, and this is the this is the fella. Let's see if you can if I can get this in focus. Oh, I have to put it right here to get it in focus. <laughs> Let's put it over my face. There we go. It's the MX Master 3S by Logitech. Uh, I remember years ago, I mean, Logitech was, you know, kind of a cheaper peripheral brand, uh, but they've really become the leader in what they do in peripherals. They, they just, they've nailed it. They've, they've put their money in their R&D. They know what they do. They know what they do best. And if you look at, um, you know, unbiased reviews, whether it's uh, PC magazine or um, photography magazines, whatever you might be looking at, um, check out the reviews on this. It always comes up number one for unbeatable um, design and usage in photography editing. editing sorry. I'm going to pick it up and actually show it to you. This is, it's very ergonomic. It's got a thumb rest right here. There's also a, um, what they call a gesture, I have to put it up here. There's also what they call a gesture switch right here. Uh, actually, let me, let me take down my blur. It's going to be a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, there we go. Okay, so there's actually a gesture switch right here, right with the, with the thumb that you can just um, do. Um, it's got two buttons right here. It's got, oops, sorry, it's got a side scroll, which is really cool, especially in a Photoshop. If you're uh, doing details, working on details, and you've really got the photo blown up wide, just moving your, your thumb to slide the photo side to side, really cool. Um, I, I, I can't say enough about it so far, and I've only been using it for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then it's got, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, roller on the top. The roller on the top is really, really good. Um, it, it, you can have it in two modes. You can have it where it's it's got the um, the click to it, not not a sound, but the, the physical click to it. Or you can have it a free spin, and it, and it can go very, very fast as well. I like the click. I like the feel of that, so I choose that. But you can you can change it very easily just by hitting that button right there, so you can switch between it very easily. The other thing that's really cool with this is if you look on the underside, and I'll bring this a little closer, um, it's got some functionality down here that most uh, mice don't have. And first of all, you can switch this mouse between three different devices. So you can use it on your desktop, switch it then to your laptop just by hitting the button. Um, it pairs either uh, wirelessly with Bluetooth or with their proprietary dongle um, that is a, a different source. I like that. I don't have Bluetooth on my, my laptop, my, um, my editing laptop. So I like their proprietary uh, system for that. I just, you know, hook that in there. 
The mag speed on the scrolling bar is incredible. And it's got, it can go up to 8,000 DPI, which is a little bit too much for uh, photo editing. Uh, but you can, you can make adjustments to it, which is really, really cool. Okay, now, aside from that side scrolling, one of the things that I really, really love about this is it comes preset up for use with photo editing, editing software. You just, when the menu comes up, you just say what you do want to use it with, you don't want to use it with. I only really use it for, you know, Google and my, my laptop, as well as photo editing. So I've got these front and back buttons, these two buttons, um, set up as they recommend, which is one is Control Z, undo, and the other one is redo. So nice. I'm able to just, at the flick of a switch, without going onto my desktop and doing Control Z, I can just hit the button and undo what I've done. So really love this mouse for photography. Like I said, I've been using it for 10 minutes. I've uh, tried it out before I went online and um, no love. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm getting some really neat gadgets lately. They do not sponsor me. I paid for this out of my own money. These are all of these gadgets. I am not sponsored. Any of the things I've been showing you, I if I am sponsored, I will let you know. Absolutely. Um, none of the things so far, I am a sponsor for any of these things. The other thing I got was the matching keyboard. And uh, I just really like it. It's got nice uh, backlight to it. It also can switch between three devices. And it just makes it streamless with the two devices. And they're nice looking. Um, solid black on, on both pieces. I, I just really like it. I like how it looks. And uh, even more, I like how it operates. So some of you may have seen in some of my prior videos that, that mouse jumping. And I was getting really frustrated. So I finally had it. I went and got it. It uh, retails here in the United States. Um, this piece, the mouse, from $99 US. Um, and the keyboard retails for $119. You can buy them separately. You can buy them in a package together. There's no discount buying it packaged together. They typically retails for $219. Worth every penny, uh, especially for just the, the value of, um, of what you're going to get with uh, that particular item. All right, so let's go into Lightroom. And uh, now that I've shown you uh, the goodies, the gadgets, uh, let, let's see what, um, let me, let me give you an example. All right, so I, and let me just take this into, uh, and it's very ergonomic as well. So my, it just feels really good in my hand. For those of you worried about uh, carpal tunnel, I had carpal tunnel years ago, already got surgery in both hands, but still, um, it, it's really very ergonomic. All right, so I'm just going to show you how quick this is and how cool. So I'm just going to take this aircraft and erase it. Ooh, I don't like that. Undo. Just a click of the switch. Uh, click of the button. So uh, I'm, Oh, and it works on glass, too. You don't even have to have a mouse pad. I'm really, really impressed with this mouse. I, don't, I guess you could tell that. So yeah, uh, showing you again. Ick, that's awful. Undo. You didn't even see me move, did you? Because I didn't. Enough comedy. <laughs> Comedian slash photographer, right? I, I, oh, I, yeah, I have, I, this is, I, for those of you not in this country, we have this great, great thing called Jamba Juice, which is all like fresh smoothies and juices. And this one, this one is uh, uh, electric berry lemonade with spirulina. And I got energy in it too. <sighs> so it's like having an energy drink. All right, I digress. Actually, before I go on to photo editing, I want to show you another thing. Um, one thing I do like about the Canon, uh, sorry, Canon, oops, I do like the Canon cameras, and just, you know. uh, Nikon, uh, the Nikon Z cameras, is that you can use both either uh, XQD or CFXB, CF Express B cards. The only problem is that you need um, two different readers to load the work onto your computer, which is fine. Um, the readers aren't that expensive. I, you know, got a nice uh, CFX uh, reader as well. Uh, 
the, the thing I do like about the CFX uh, B and uh, people that have been uh, talking to me about is that it, it you can get them in larger increments um, for a lot less money. So my Sony XQDs are were a lot more expensive for less room. Still love them, but I went ahead and I thought I would give the uh, CFX a try. And uh, so I got a 256, a reasonable price. They were on sale, more than half off at uh, the camera my camera store in New York that I buy from. And so I'm going to give that out a try as soon as I get the reader, and we'll take a look at that. So yeah, the, I do like the fact, and I don't know if the Canons can do this too. But I love this format, the CFX, uh, CFX B and the XQD. They're just solidly made. Um, they don't feel flimsy. They feel it, like the old CFX, uh, not CFX, the old uh, CFast cards. What they were bigger, but they were they were hardy. Um, that's what I like about these as well, and they're very very solid. Um, they're like little SSD card, SSD drive, sorry, SDD drive, solid state, mm, SSD, solid state drives. Um, excellent stuff. Uh, the, uh, I don't use, um, I use the, at regular SD cards as a backup if it's got two slots. And, um, I simply do that as a backup. So I've got that backup and then I've got this as a, a second backup on the road. At home, of course, I've got my everything on my computer. I've got several drives that are uh, duplicating backup, as well as a whole NAS system um, with part, that's partitioned to uh, automatically back up my stuff. Um, one of the things I was going to say, my brain. Oh, <laughs> I remember now what I was going to say. Um, one of the things I was going to say. Uh, this is made by Rugged, also. Uh, this is a little uh, card carrying case. This one happens to be for XQD and uh, CFB cards. So, uh, because I've got five here and I have to room for one more. I really like this because, I mean, Rugged makes, if these are foam, Rugged makes a really good solid product for travel. Um, I have other products by, by Rugged. Uh, for example, I, I think I have uh, my uh, parka for my camera is made by the same company. Um, the other thing I do use is this um, little case and it's kind of cute. It, it just it looks like a little it looks like a little pelican suitcase. Um, you can even hang it. It's a little heavy to hang from anything, but it depends on what you're wearing, right? And this carries some cards, some SD cards, uh, some SD cards, as well as um, you could put XQD cards or CFB, CFXBs in there, uh, plus three batteries, plus three batteries, which I tend to like. Uh, the other thing I always bring with me, of course, is um, a, a charger, a, a, a power pack for on the road, especially if I'm going to cold places, like I will be going to Antarctica, when I was up in the Arctic, you can't your batter your batteries can drain a lot quicker, so it's good to have redundancy, redundancy on everything. I can't say it enough. When you're in the field, redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. It seems silly, but the minute you're out there and something goes wrong, you're going to be really happy that you have other ways to do things. So. Um, the other thing um, I'll go ahead and mention briefly is, and you can't see it, it's off to the side, but mine is called Slinger. Um, that's the, the brand. A, uh, it's a dry cabinet. Uh, you've invested a few pennies into your camera gear. And the last thing you want is any type of fungus or anything growing on your lenses because of humidity. Now, I live in the Pacific Northwest. It is a rainforest, but it's considered a cold rainforest. Our humidity is normal. It's not extensive humidity. It's not like, like Texas or something like that, where you're, or, or even anywhere in the tropics, where you're really dealing with incredible humidity. Everything you have has to have a dry cabinet. Um, I mean, even, even you need to get into a dry cabinet. But um, 
we have enough humidity above what I like it at. I mean, you really shouldn't have your camera gear in uh, permanently anything more than, say, about 35 to 36, 37 uh, percent humidity. You don't want it too dry either. So the humidity cabinet or the, uh, the dry cabinet, uh, mine was, uh, it's got four shelves, not, not huge, but I'm able to put a lot of gear in there, all my telephotos and everything, and it just keeps everything nice and at the right humidity level. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, another product that I do um, highly recommend. And one thing I want to do is bring my blur back a little bit. There we go. Forgot to do that. So yeah, so that's that's a um, a product. You know, another product that I like. Um, I highly suggest. What I used to do is I used to have all of my um, equipment in my Pelican cases, which. I don't really travel with, although I will be traveling with this time. I have one that is airline sized. Um, it's designed for travel. Keep them in, in there with uh, desiccant uh, packs. And that's fine. That's that's you know great, especially if you don't have that much stuff. But after a while, it, it became uh, a little bit labored to you know, have to pull out the case and take things out, put things back. Sometimes I want easy access. So this dry cabinet really, really fit the bill for me that I could keep. And I have a lot of gear, a lot of gear. You know, as, as I've, as I've you know, purchased new cameras as the time goes on, um, the older cameras that I don't use that often, if, you know, if not rarely, um, I, I will keep in the Pelican cases and any of my newer lenses, things I use much more often and I want, you know, really to be have access um, fairly quickly where I can put it into a camera bag, throw some desiccant in there. Uh, I keep in my dry case, my electronic dry case. So another good one to, uh, uh, another good item to take a look at. All right. Editing. Oh. All right, um, I'm you know I haven't looked at these in ages, so I kind of want to play with these. They're they're they've got some interesting qualities, and I I think I want to actually actually let me just oh I did dehaze that. I'm going to bring this into Luminar Neo. Right now, I'm just kind of playing around with some programs and, and you know, checking out and seeing how things work. Um, just for giggles. All right. So I'm going to relight it. Just a little bit. Don't want to relight this one too much. Do some other things. Atmosphere. Oh, actually, let me go back to relight, and I wanted to give it a bit more depth. It has good depth, but And under develop, again, what I like in um, the Luminar programs, uh, Skylum software, is that they're, they're really set up very similar to uh, Lightroom. And therefore, they're, you know, fairly easy to use. I'm going to bring up shadows a bit, quite a bit, because I want to kind of highlight that plane. 
and I can bring up the exposure just just a bit. I don't want to bring it up too much. Actually, that's still a bit too much. And bring that up. Okay, bring the white of the airplane up a little bit too. And let's go into sky because this is begging for some for some sky adjustments. might be okay. Now we just have to fix the orientation. And the horizon. Oops, that's a little bit too much. And now Fortunately, I'm going to have to fix this here. Yeah, I, I actually, to be honest with you, I don't like it. So, let's start over. Sometimes it's hard to find the right one. The other problem with this is you have to be really careful with horizons because of the uh, mountains in the back. Nope, don't like that one either. 
This one may be hard. It may be hard to find a sky in the collections that I have that is going to work. Oh, I haven't loaded any of my custom skies yet. Uh, this is a sunset. I am not feeling it. Not feeling it. Some of these are just too low. Yeah, it's really not white of the helicopter in there. That's really weird. Could go with something more plain and then just warm it up. Something very, very plain. Get it? Plain. Sorry, bad humor. Uh, and we'll really warm that up. Mm. Change my mind. Oh, Beasel. Beasel's barking. Beasel, Beasel, Beasel. Also known as Clifford. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like the the because of the mountains. It's just really not giving me what I want. Um, I can do one that doesn't have the mountains in front of it, like that. I think I'm taking through a fence there, um, like that. Yeah, that's better. Even that's better. And bring that in. See see what we can do with the sky there. Just for giggles. Let's see what we can do. I don't know, is Frontier even still in business? I don't know. I think they are. Okay. Alright, that works better. Let's 
Oops. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> Yeah, I like that better. All right. And I am going to crop this a little bit because I don't like the edge there. I don't like what I did with the edge. So that's a, that's better. Um, now I can relight it on the airplane, bring the shadow up a little bit on the airplane itself. Not too much. I don't want to make it too bright. And then I'm going to bring it into denoise. Man, I love this mouse. It just feels good in my hand. It's really nice. It's a pleasure to work with. Let me zoom to fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the original. And we got rid of the noise. And I will apply that. I like it. Uh, this was the original, original, original. And this is our correct original. So let's go to the library. And I'm going to flag that one. We haven't really edited these photographs. I've just kind of had them in there took them ages ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it says it was changed on 8-20-22, but I shot it in 2015. So, you know, substantially older. Uh, this was with a Decon, a Decon, <laughs> this was with a Nikon D7000, um, which I still have. Um, I, I don't use that anymore, but I do still have it. Um, and yeah, so fun, just fun, fun shot. Oh, I'll go ahead. Oh, I haven't exported that yet, so I'm not going to do anything with that. All right, some other planes. Let's see what we have. Sometimes it's just fun to go to the airport and take photographs. Um, I have not done that at, um, uh, Portland International Airport, where I live. Uh, this was in Las Vegas. They, they've got, because it's, it's so open in Las Vegas, there's some great um, spots to take uh, photographs. Spirit Airlines, mm, terrible airline. Never flown it, I refuse. Uh, let's see, these are all Spirit. Yeah, I am not taking a picture of Spirit Airlines. I mean, doing any of them because Spirit Airlines. Okay. We'll go back to airplanes in a second. Bellagio. Just some playing with water. That's in Las Vegas. The, not the real Eiffel Tower. Oh, that's Spirit. Yeah. I don't want to do Spirit Airline. Southwest. Oh, yeah. I kind of like this photograph. I mean, it needs, it definitely needs some sky, which, you know, is, is 
I can do. Um, I like it because it's right over the tower. So let's, I'm going to bring it into uh, Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo. And we're going to play around with Sky. So, Sky Selection. bad just not impressed I can live with that. Okay. Closing the gaps, make sure to uh, put the uh, sky fully in the background. Make sure that there's nothing that's making it look like it's in the foreground. I brought the sky brightness up a little bit more because I'm also going to brighten up the plane a bit. So you have to brighten the sky if you're brightening the plane. The only thing I don't like about this program is that once you've made your adjustments in sky, uh, you go on to make another adjustment. It is not going to let you do that. So you have to, you have to do it all right at the right at the uh, time you do that. All right. I'm going to apply this. Like the way that looks, much better than just that plain sky. This is why I really haven't done anything with this until now is because I haven't really had the right program that is, you know, motivated me to do anything with these. I do want to take the noise out. Oh, error processing. It's going to crash. Hasn't been doing that for a while, and all of a sudden it's doing it again. That's better. 
low light noise. Alright, I am going to bring up the shadows just a bit more. Okay, I, I have um, some friends that are that are really really into um, avia uh, aviation, and uh, so they, they I know they they really like these photographs. So I am kind of doing it for them actually. All right, I will star that. I flag that. All right, moving on to other aircraft. Are we still in Southwest? Still Southwest. Still Southwest. Delta. Sorry, Delta. Don't like you. Uh, not a big fan. Not a fan at all. Southwest again. They get a lot of Southwest in... Um, Las Vegas, Southwest Airlines. Decent airline. Yeah, I'm not big on it, but I kind of like this photograph. Um, never, again, never done anything with it. I just like the angle. I was doing there just had to check um, okay all right so I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a tiny drop and this is begging for a new sky Neon. This is just kind of fun uh, playing around with some photographs where I can insert some skies. Uh, it may not be anything that I, you know, uh, publish, but I uh, do like, um, it's fun. Just kind of fun. All right. Now, I want a, a dramatic sky here. I don't have any sunrises, but... Not the drama I was looking for. No. All right, so it, I'm going to have to revert the whole thing to original. Just for giggles. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I think it's funny. Then again, I've had an energy drink and a coffee, so. I'm going to take my word for it. I can put it, the Milky Way behind it. Uh, yeah, it's kind of funky.
He lied human. There's no human here. I might like that a little bit better. Uh, the sun is a little too glaring in the in the scene. Uh, it's not allowing me to cast that shadow, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to take the sun almost completely out of it. All right, all right, I'm, I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy with that. All right. All right, now I am still gonna denoise it. And we're just gonna do low light denoise, which is what I've got there. Oh man, I love this mouse. How can I be in love with a mouse? All right, that's pretty cool. Just took a little light. Nice. Very nice. I do like that. Um, I do want to recover some of the original detail and apply that. Kind of a fun photograph. Bring the shadow up by just a hair more. Because we do have that sunlight coming in underneath. I kind of like that. All right, I am going to flag that. So just some fun um, playing with skies, playing with light. Um, did I do this one? I did not. Spirit Airlines, don't want to do it. Delta, I don't care about. My favorite airline is Alaska. I'm just going to, I'm an Alaska girl, and I was just, not, not the state, the Alaska Airlines. Um, love Alaska Airlines. Just don't like Spirit Airlines. Okay, I am actually going to go ahead and export these. Uh, let me make sure I have a folder. I'm just going to call this aircraft.
Some of you know I was also having trouble with my keyboard. It's a little bit annoying. All right, so attribute, flag. Southwest takeoff. I exported that into the wrong place. <laughs> I will have to get rid of it. I uh, don't want that in sports. I want that in aircraft. There we go, much better. And five star it because I am exporting it. Um, Southwest Tau and Tower. I am terrible at naming uh, photographs for contests and things. Awful, awful, awful. Um, just not my forte. Yeah, we'll leave it at local. Oops, I want to five star that one. And this one is Frontier taking off. Export. And I'm going to do actually black local left. And I can find start that one. Uh, now let me go into the well, actually, let me go into sports and get rid of the aircraft picture. And go back into aircraft. See how these look. Fun. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. There's a little bit of fun with, um, you know, playing around with some different tools, and uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Eh, there's not much I want to do with any of those. This was not an added sky. This was um, all natural, as was this one. Oh, that's in the wrong place. That is in the wrong place. All right, now I can get out of finished photos and go back into here. Oh, you know, with some of the tools I have now, my old Soviet photographs, and I do mean during the Soviet Union. Um, yeah. Let's play with these. In Russia, they have they had during the Soviet years they had very very drab skies. We're gonna uh, try and fix the sky here with Uncle Lenin. <laughs> Cannot be bright sky. 
I can do that. My ancestors were, some of my ancestors were Russian. Um, oh, that's perfect. Cloudy and drab. It was middle, middle of winter, so also not my fault. Really loved this because of the, um, the very drab looking building and then the bright red, uh, you know, picture of Lenin uh, really, really caught my eye. And of course, not something you would see anymore. I want to close gaps. Make sure that that is behind the building. Not too much. There we go. That's good. Now it's really, really, really behind the building. So it's not <clears throat> impacting the lighting of the building at all. It's one of the things you do have to be careful about is you have to relight certain things and this happens to be one of them. Oh, I'm just going to relight down here too. A um, little bit more brightness in the air. Blue. Just a tad. And then, <clears throat> not toning, color harmony. Just bring up the brilliance and the reds a little bit more. Just so we have that picture. It was super red. Um, this was shot in film. <clears throat> so the um, negative was, uh, I imported the negative. And um, so you can see it's a bit, it's got the grain from film. Uh, don't know that I'm going to want to do anything with that. Let's see. No, good there. If I add more film grain. Ugh. I like the sharpness of it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of film grain. Some people love film grain. And I'm not a big lover of film grain. It's just me. Kind of like that mystical look to it. Now I do want to go back into color harmony and take down a little of that red. That it was bordering onto pink. And I don't want that. Okay. I like it. And now I can make some HSL color adjustments here by 
taking up the red saturation, just a tiny drop. Um, better to do it in HSL where you, um, and, and I like doing HSL actually in uh, Lightroom. And part of the reason is because I can do individual colors. So here I want to, you know, bring up the red, which is really, really highlighting that red just a tiny drop. I mean, it's just all it's doing is really bringing out the original red. Remember, this is um, this is was a piece of um, um, a negative, uh, a film negative. This is from the early 80s, 1983 to be exact. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's got some qualities that, you know, over time, of course, negatives degrade. I have since, hopefully, uh, unless I haven't found any, um, digitized all my negatives uh, with a, uh, a machine that I, uh, that I had purchased. And um, so hopefully I've been able to preserve all of them because I've been doing photography and, you know, used to do primarily film, like I have said before, kind of went into digital kicking and screaming and now I can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, but I have been doing photography since the early 80s, so didn't want to lose any of that stuff. And, um, you know, some of it, some of it was award winning, so you, you definitely don't want to lose it. But there's, there are also ways I can enhance it now and then also preserve it. Now, I'm going to bring this into uh, Photoshop because of the age of the negative. Uh, you know, we're going back a few years, <laughs> 1983. I'm kind of aging myself there. Uh, I'm going to make that smaller. Oh, keyboard, wonderful. And I'm just going to fix some of the imperfections um, that you see from, uh, not from the film, um, not, not, not from the photograph as taken, but from the degradation of uh, the negative over the years. Uh, try to keep these in, you know, optimal conditions, but, you know, you move, life happens, um, things get put in storage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can't always, um, you know, you can't always, you know, plan for the future when it comes to that. And let's face it, uh, none of us were psychic and didn't know that we were going to have these tools. So... There you go. Actually, I want to fix a little bit of Lennon's face as well. The negative has some scratches. All right, I think that's, that's better. Okay, now I am going to take it into denoise because I don't, I'm not a fan of, of uh, film grain just not so i'll go ahead and take it in i mean everybody knows this photograph was shot uh, in in film you know there's no such thing as a digital camera in 1983 and, and lennon's photograph is not still there so there you go uh, oh i'm gonna do severe noise obviously not a raw photograph uh, there that didn't exist back in the day and let's see, did it take it? Yeah, it did. Took out quite a bit of noise. Just enough noise to make me happy without altering the, the character of the photograph. And I don't really have to take out any of the color from the building or anything because it's already drab. It's already colorless. So I don't even have to do any, you know, masking and painting, you know, with color or any of those things because they did it for me naturally. It's wonderful. Uh, one of the things I, I, I really enjoyed at, 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 from, from a photography perspective, um, I would not have wanted to live there during that time, but uh, from a photography perspective, it was really cool having the drabness of the building and the drabness of winter uh, combined with this bright red uh, picture of Lennon. And this wasn't the only spot. It was, it was everywhere. But this one just really struck me um, as being very, very cool. And I just dehazed that a little bit, just a touch. It's one of the things I like to do, bring in the blacks a little bit. And I can 
close all these down. Actually, what if I did less contrast? I can do a hair more contrast. And take down the vibrance. Just a touch. Takes down the vibrance in the whole photograph, but what I did is, if, if you remember, I did an HSL with red. So I, I brought up the red, but that also gave me room to bring down the vibrance and um, even make the, the building a little more drab than it already was. So I like it. I like it. All right. I am going to flag that. I'm actually going to export it because um, I just think it's kind of cool. All right, so I am going to do another new folder, and we're just going to call this USSR. And export. Lemon. Needs very little, uh, yeah, don't forget to change the folder. Um, needs very little um, explanation. Lennon is good enough. And I'll do a white logo right. All right. Fun revisiting old photographs, um, seeing what, you know, can be done with them. There are a lot of things that can be done with old photographs to, you know, bring them back to life. And, and this is essentially what's happening here, taking an old photograph from 1983. Um, uh, you know, it's 40 years old, this photograph, uh, this negative, and, you know, adding some extra stuff to it. I was but a child when I took this photograph. Actually, I was. I was young. <laughs> so... I was young one time, you know. Oh, okay, so that one I already removed the cars and such. So I will flag it. And see what we can do. Ah, didn't want to edit it there, sorry. I wanted to take that into Gloominar Neo. See if we can't do something fun with it. I don't know what that little dance was, but yeah, Facebook Live. Hey, I don't have any music in the background, so don't you know give me any garbage for uh, copyright violation. I've done that to two of my videos, and I have no music on. Wow. All right, again, a very, very drab day. So I'm probably gonna go with the same sky. And let's see if we can make it work. Closing the gaps puts it behind. Ugh. Close it even more. like that. Now it's going to be the hard part. Um, oh, let me do a little. Of 
spring this in the air. All right, now it's going to be the hard part, which is denoising this. And of course, I'm not going to do it in here. I will do it in Topaz Denoise, hopefully. Come on, Topaz. Don't you crash. Don't you do... It's like talking to my dog. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Stop it. my angry face. <laughs> mm. Really? Really? Come on. Come on, Topaz. You can't handle it. You can't handle film. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Um, zoom to fit. Let me do severe noise. See if you can do it without crashing. Oh, that's better. All right, I'll keep that. Yeah, I think that's that's better. It's it's not perfect, but it's better. So I'm going to unflag that one, unflag that one. Oh, see, it, it, it just kept making copies. I don't know why it's doing that. It crashes, but it makes a copy. It's really, really weird. Okay, that's the one. Whoops, let me unflag that one. And that's the one I like. It, but I'm not done with it yet. I still have some things to do. To uh, bump it up. Now I am going to do the vibrance a little bit more here, only because this really is a vibrant building. It's one of the few, um, that, you know, especially in the winter in the Soviet Union, that are vibrant. The thing that I, there's a problem with it that I'm not really happy about is up here at the top, but um, I'll work on that a little bit. And I might even be able to bring this into uh, GigaPixel a little bit and um, see if it can, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, bring it into Gigapixel and see if it can um, do anything to help. I haven't really used Gigapixel that much, so this is going to be kind of an experiment for me too. Um, it's low resolution, so it is updating. And I am going to zoom to fit so we can see that a little bit better. Um, this, is, this is fun for me. I, I've not used Gigapixel. So really, I mean, I think I've used it once. Um, I don't notice a whole lot of... Um, okay, so let's look at the presets. Art and CG, best for any image that is not a photograph, includes computer graphics, arts, drawings, or scans. Now, uh, this was a scan of a, of a uh, negative, so maybe. Uh, lines. Good for architecture, cityscapes, cities, <coughs> cityscapes, typography, and any image with thick lines. Hmm. 
standard. It shows where it came and where it from. Think it came across artifacts with fur and feathers. We don't have any fur and feathers. Uh, low res, uh, best for images with blocky compression artifacts. Uh, keeps more detail than the very compressed model. The very compressed, best for images with a lot of compression artifacts, for example, images that were saved at a small size, scanned images, okay, or old digital images. Let's try very compressed and see what happens. Yeah, it needs to download some more model files. I am not surprised. All right. Oh, it's updating now. It's downloaded the models. It's the original. It hasn't done a lot, but hmm. Yeah, all right, I, th I think that's the best I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm not in try on more mode. Ugh. Really? Mm. All right, I have no idea what my password is. Gee, thanks. Thanks for verifying my ownership. Well, that was fun. I've never used this um, this program, really. So um, that was interesting. Now, I am going to, to it's probably not going to do what I want, but I'm going to take it into Topaz Sharpen anyway, just to see if it can't maybe do what I want. Let's zoom to fit. No. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. It's getting there, but um, not quite what I want. No. Oh, that's a little better. Remember, this is, you know, these are negatives that have degraded over time, so. Um, oh, yeah, that's much better. I think that's uh, sharpened it enough. Let's try normal. Whoops.
a strong one. That's not one. No, that one didn't do enough. Alright, I'm going to try standard. No. Yeah, that's not too bad. It, it's as good as I'm going to get it. Whoops, as good as I'm going to get it uh, for a 40 year old uh, negative. Uh, there's really sometimes just so much you can do uh, to adjust a 40 year old negative. I think one thing I will do is I want to maybe brighten that blue just a little bit. I think I have the luminance in that blue. Yeah, that was nice. And there's some orange here that I also would like to bring up the luminance in right there in that tower. Um, don't really want to bring up any of the luminance of the red, just I'm going for the gold domes. So um, the yellow and the orange, you know, in the colored domes. And that does that up here as well. By using dehaze, I'm, I'm taking out um, some of the some of that weird glow, glowy haze that I'm not really crazy about. Deepening the blacks also help to do that, like right around the buildings. It's a little too dark. It's a little too clear. I want to be minimalist with some of these things. You don't really want to. The only time I really go wild is if I really need to bring the shadows up in one particular area, then I will do that. Otherwise, I. Contrast as is. <sighs> My eye is hurting. All right. The Kremlin. Kremlin, nineteen eighty three. All right, this is kind of some fun stuff to do. Uh, looking at old photographs and playing around with, oh, how about this one? Oh, let me take the flags off of those. Uh, get a load of this one. Look at the cars. Ha, is that Soviet or what? 
Uh, this was a, just a, a metro station that I thought was a fun photograph. Uh, this was the line to see Lenin's tomb. Um, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Uh, uh, Catherine Pallas. I was but a wee child. A lot of degradation in these, unfortunately. Uh, 40-year-old negatives, it is what it is. Uh, just for giggles, I am going to take this into Luminar Neo. Oh, I still have coffee. Luminar Neo has some neat features. I don't know if it'll work, but let's give it a try. Under Erase, you can remove power lines. It did, up in the left corner. And remove dust spots, and maybe this will get rid of um, the errors in film. And it did a little bit. Not a lot. All right, so I can use the erase tool here. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, and we'll just get rid of some stuff. Yeah, it, it's... I'm going to have to adjust that a bit more. That's better. All right, this is going to be the hard part. And I, this is something I usually do in Photoshop. You can give it a try here. Uh, getting rid of that line from... Yeah, it didn't do it too bad of a job. It's just a line on the negative. Not too bad. I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. All right. Okay, before I do anything in here, as far as sky goes, I'm going to apply that, apply those fixes. Um, I may even just I want to get rid of the car here at the bottom so I'm going to crop down a little bit all right now I will take it into uh, denoise hopefully denoise won't um, have a hissy fit and I don't know, it didn't. All right, original. Oh, it did a nice job. Okay, uh, zoom to fit. Let's look at it up close and personal. It did a decent job. Decent, decent, decent job. actually take the color noise reduction down but back where it was okay um, I like this severe noise I'm gonna try standard no let's try low light oh low light might even be better yeah. Hang on. And try severe noise again. Low light was better. All right. Okay, now I can, oh, I've got a couple more spots that I see. I'll just 
do the old Lightroom fix. Okay, now I'm going to bring it into Luminar Neo again and put a sky in there. It's just begging for a sky. Before I do that, let me so much. Boost the structure a little bit. All right. No, sharpening it isn't going to work. Uh, neither is the medium details. Now I'm going to go into the sky selection, choose a drab sky, uh, maybe even just that same one. It, it, it says dramatic, but it's not really dramatic. And then let's go in and make our adjustments. I think we're okay as far as position goes. I'm going to close any gaps to make sure that it stays completely behind. Fixing all the details. Defocus it a little bit. I defocus it a little bit so that it matches. It's not too sharp, too focused, so that it matches the uh, photograph. And we don't want any warmth there. It was the Soviet Union. There was no warmth. And it's the middle of winter. That's good. Don't have to like that. Not crazy about the glow. Mystical. No. Dramatic. Should we add some drama? I like to remove drama out of my life, not add it. No. 
Oh, the sun rays. Okay. You can place the sun somewhere too, which is really cool. You can bump up those sun rays. Isn't that cool? Um, okay, overall look. That's fine. We do not want much penetration on those sun rays. Nope. Okay. Don't need any fog. What other things are there? Layered fog, mist, and haze. So just some fun stuff in there. And I can denoise this a little bit more. Actually, I don't want to denoise it too much because it, it's making the people too soft. not going to be able to do that with the, this particular uh, photograph. All right, so if I apply this, so, oh, wrong one. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's where I was. I've got to get used to being able to use my scroll, my left, my left thumb scroll. All right, so that that's what we had. Actually, this was the original. And this is what we've adjusted it to. Um, I am going to try and do a little bit of clarity here just because I'm really interested in cleaning that up a bit. All right. I, I you know, for a 40 year old photograph, uh, 40 years old in um, January. Not too bad. All right, now let's see. go ahead and see what they look like. Not too bad. Yeah, I like that one the best. Even that, not too bad. Again, this, these are old photographs. Uh, you you know you do the best you can when you're dealing with um, forty year old um, scanned negatives. You know it's really you just do the best you can. This is a little bit better of a picture. Um, it, it, it's, I'm not sure what lens I was using because it was a long time ago. Um, optic film, it tells me it was optic film, which I already knew, uh, but that's pretty cool that it, that it knew that. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. I will be right back.
And I'm back. All right. So this did its job while I was out. That is before and that is after. Uh, let's see what severe noise does. Back to low light. I actually like the low light a bit more. Although I will bump up the noise suppression. I do like that. Cover some of the original detail. I actually may like this better than the other Kremlin photograph. All right, I'm going to apply that. Yeah, big difference. All right, I didn't. Let me unflag that one. Okay, so big difference before, after. Oh, sorry, got something in my eye there. And I am going to, um, I'm going to crop this because it's got a weird kind of rounded angle that's not conducive. Um, it's, I kind of like these cars parked in front though. They, they're indicative, indicative of um, 80s Soviet era Russian um, cars. Uh, for those people that had cars, there at the uh, Kremlin. Oops. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to bring it into Neo. And we've got some work to do here. So first thing I'm going to do before I play with skies or anything like that is erase or remove power lines, which there aren't any. Um, remove dust spots. May not be able to do it because they it's film. So that's fine. But I'll use the erase just to get rid of some stuff, like artifacts from being filmed and being stored. And erase. Very good. Oops. Don't want to make that smaller. A little bit smaller. I'm also going to get rid of this car in the front just because I don't like it. I don't like that either. Oh, no! Deselect. Okay. Um. Won't let me move it actually. Still going to denoise it a little bit more in here. And actually, I think, oh, no, don't give me original. I want free ratio. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make it more of a, 
uh, horizontal photograph. So I'm completely changing the, the, the direction of the photograph from, from horizon to vertical, from horizontal to vertical, just because I don't really want all that other stuff. And um, I want to keep the integrity of this. Could you actually even crop it a bit more? Whoops. Uh, helps if you grab it in the right place. Come on. Why is it not letting me? Oh, I wanted three. No. Facebook cover, Facebook feed, interesting. Never looked at that before. Um, let's go back to here and bring it all the way to here. All right. I like that. Good enough. Um, That's making it too. So it's for giggles. Misty. Ooh, that's creepy. No, don't like it. No, 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 no. Oh, I do see some more spots there. Let me go on to the erase. And I want to zoom this in. Two hundred percent. There we go. Because I need to get rid of these scratches. I don't usually like to go all the way across like this, but let's see what happens. Maybe it'll be kind to me. It was not. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do this little pieces at a time. Just to get rid of the, the it's the scratch on a negative. Um, it's the price we pay for being old. <laughs> like what it did. No. Mm. Okay. Let's try bringing that, making that really small. That's better. I mean, it's not perfect. What is better than the scratch? Sometimes it's very tedious.
That's as good as I'm going to get it. Yeah, that's that's better. I got rid of that line there. Oh, I do see the bar on a little thing here. That's weird. All right, so that's as good as I'm going to get it with, with regards to that. Um, see if I can sharpen the details a little bit more. All right, now I'm going to try this guy. So, drab sky. Uh, it was winter time. Um, all right. It's been a good position. better and it's got an adjustment oops wrong one there we go close any gaps actually oops wrong one a little bit better. I can live with that. Let's chew. There we go. Take out the glow. There we go. All right. Much better. Um, I think I will defocus the sky a little bit. So that it matches the photograph again film it is what it is and apply all right so i've captured the drabness but i do want to use hsl and saturate and a little bit and luminance on some of these colors Some of the natural colors that are in there. So we've got a green there. And there's a yellow. It's really a gold. I mean, like actual gold. Uh, gold leaf, but using the yellow and the orange, we can really bump up the luminance of the gold. As well as using the yellow. So yellow and orange really took care of the gold, all the little gold leaf areas. Some of it may be solid gold, I'm sure. Um, plundered from the people. And um, I am going to bring up the red a little bit here on both luminance and saturation. It's not bringing up the the brick building. What it's doing is bringing up like the red in this particular um, tower. You see there is snow on top that is snow, not going to, you know, it is what it is that's, that's supposed to be there. Uh, but we brought up the gold, I'm oh, sorry, the red here and then the red in this one as well. So and that worked. the blue for a second so I don't want to, want to mess with hue mess with hue and it really covers the whole photograph you really must stick with um, saturation and luminance in certain colors and 
just going to give it a little more clarity. This gives it some depth. Now, I haven't taken this into um, Sharpen and, I mean, let's do it to see what it'll do. I actually like that. Here's the original. It's just a little fuzzy around the, the towers, the, the right in the center there. And that just sharpened it up a bit. I'm gonna try a couple of other things. Don't think I like that one. No. We'll try too soft. That's actually not bad. Really gives it some depth. Um, I'm going to try too soft, it's very noisy. No. Too soft to normal. Go back to that one. Yeah, I do like that one. Okay, so that's not the one I was doing. <laughs> that's the one I was doing, I think. Yeah, what is this one? Yeah, completely different photograph. All right, so this is how we started out, then went to this then to that, and finally to that. Uh, so big difference, uh, just with a couple of, you know, editing tools to go from this one to this one. Same photograph taken in 1983. So you have to, you have to, um, you know, we, we kind of have to, you can't expect too much from the tools. The tools we have do an amazing job considering this is a 40-year-old negative that was scanned into a digital format. I can't complain. Uh, of course, when I took the photograph, it you know it it was great. Um, not as good as what digital is today. It just it just isn't. So um, I'm still pleased with what the tools could do given um, given what I put into the tool. Uh, it's not that it's a bad photograph. It's it's just it was film, and it, when it was printed, when it was originally printed, great great photograph. It didn't have artifacts. It didn't have any of those other things. But as degradation happens over the years, um, I I think the tools that that I've used have really really brought it back to life as much as possible. So I'm pleased. I I, I certainly am not. Um, having any problem with that. Now, I think what I will do, however, is go back into HSL because you see, when you bring it out, and this is one of the things I like in Lightroom, when you bring it out and do something in another program as I did, and then bring it back into Lightroom, it resets all of your radio sliders back to zero. So, um, I might like to pump up that blue a bit more 
just to really draw the eye to it. Um, drawing the eye there keeps keeps your eye away from any imperfections. Uh, so you know that's that's really the goal. Now I could crop this more, but I don't want to crop it anymore. I want to keep those 80s cars, uh, pullet bureau cars in there. Uh, they set the tone really, and they're they're part of the uh, function of the photograph. So I'm just going to bump up some of the colors here. really get those colors popping. Because it is a very colorful building and the building itself is absolutely beautiful. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's really, uh, it's really quite amazing uh, to see. Um, unfortunately, I will not be going back to Russia um, anytime soon if ever. Okay, I like this one. I'm going to star and flag and export. And this is Kremlin. in 1983. The other one was something similar, but I told you I'm not really very good at uh, labeling these. I'm going to not put a watermark on this one just because I don't want it to go over the vehicles down here, those 1980s Politburo vehicles. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Kremlin 83. So I, I do like that photograph. I think it's really kind of, um, it pops. Just the, the, the little adjustments we did with it really make it pop. Um, there's not, you know, you're never going to be able to take a 40 year old negative and, and make it a, a digital photograph that you're taking today with, you know, uh, 24, uh, you know, pixels and, you know, any of those things. It's just not going to happen. But that doesn't mean you can't really enhance a photograph that you know you may have taken a long time ago if you're older like me and you may yourself have taken a long time ago or even maybe a family photograph that you want to enhance maybe it's you know your grandparents or something you know and and the, it's film and it's yeah it's grainy or it's not so great there are things you can do to bring it back which is really really cool so again um that's what we ended up with that's what we started with and that's what we ended with. All from a negative. All from a negative, um, just with the tools we have. Not not getting, you know, not taking away too much of the integrity of the photograph. Um, especially, you know, we, I didn't do anything to the cars at the bottom. Um, there's a little bit of haziness in certain areas, and that's okay. Left it as is. It's just it's we've still got this kind of ethereal feel of the original shot. Uh, while cleaning it up and really enhancing. I mean, look at the gold. We have the gold out here. Uh, very dull here. Look at the colors are very dull. They were bright at one time. Again, 40-year-old negative. But look at the colors there versus the colors there. So, but you can't just saturate. You can't just saturate and use HSL and, you know, say, just saturate everything. You can't do that. Um, HSL is better than vibrance and saturate because saturation because you can do individual colors and so I chose the colors it also didn't bring any vibrance to the colors of the sky it didn't really do anything there it just did it on the building where it finds those colors so yeah just some fun stuff you can do and I, what, I'm, what I'm showing you here is, is really a lot of stuff that, you know, just anybody can do. You don't have to have, um, you know, a lot of skill with Photoshop or any of those things. Uh, I'm trying to show you some, some skills, some, some things you can do that are 
relatively simple, um, relatively um, easy to do for the average person if you want to enhance your photographs. I uh, don't really want to do that one. Uh, this was kind of cool. I mean, it is still kind of cool because it's, it's a time that doesn't exist anymore. We're, we're really, remember, I, I, any of my uh, study viewers know, for me, photography is capturing a moment in time. And uh, this is really a good display and a good explanation of exactly what I mean. This is long gone. Uh, the wall fell in 1989. This is 1983. And um, this may be, you know, way before most of you that are watching and way before your time. But this, this captures a moment in time. And it's not, it's not something that, you know, you know, you're looking at in a magazine from Time Life. Um, or I don't think that exists anymore. Life. Um, Time Magazine, I think, still does. Yeah, of course it does. Uh, you know, or any any magazine of the day. This is something that um, just you know I was at the time a young person um, in in this going to the Soviet Union and capturing life as I saw it, um, just as a an individual uh, capturing the moment. So that has always been a a feature of my photography. And my biggest desire is to share those slices of life, those moments in life. All right, um, just play with this one a little bit. This is gonna be the last one I'm gonna do for today uh, because I'm, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so, just looked at the time. Oh wow, yeah, that, that already did a great job. Yeah. Good deal. Now this one I am going to bring in to sharpen. That was the noise. And this is without the noise. I am going to bring this one in to sharpen. I don't need to adjust any of the color here. That red is already bright. This is one that, you know, held held up. Um, I do have some scratches here. So uh, let me bring it into Luminar Neo and see if we can't take care of that. I don't want to get rid of any of the power lines because the power lines are part of the photograph here but I do want to get rid of scratches. Get rid of power lines, let's see what happens. No. All right, so I'm going to have to do it on my own. Yeah, that works out well. And you can see I'm not just drawing a line across, I'm doing it a little bit at a time. 
otherwise it it just it, it doesn't work well none of the um none of the you know spot healing or this erase feature um, none of them work well if you just do a whole line some down here too. All right, I think I've gotten the scratches um, that I wanted to get rid of. Oops, the dot. Oh no, let's need a little bit more. It's the unfortunate part of uh, very old negatives. You know, and a lot, I, I used to be a purist. I used to say, I'm only going to shoot and film. You know, and, and there's some people that still love to shoot and film, and it's great. Um, but, you know, be warned that shooting in film, you are going to get degradation of the negative. And that is always going to be a problem. Um, in fact, I think I've mentioned this before uh, quite some time ago. Uh, my grandfather, my, my brother was a, a, a photographer during the Vietnam War, a war photographer. And my grandfather um, actually was, um, didn't get credit for it, but the inventor of the photo booth and was a photographer during the 1939 New York World's Fair. So I have a little bit of it in my history, in my blood. Uh, and I'm sure my brother and my grandfather, were they alive today, would be amazed at what you can do uh, with photography. Oh, I see it a bit more.
I know I'm I'm probably like really being picky and um, going a little deep into the scratches, but you know, I, I like to make sure I get everything. All right. Um, I am, I think, going to add a little bit of sky here. I will also, uh, nope, not erase, develop, uh, do some noise reduction in here. And you can do layers in here as well. Um, a lot of people do. I'm going to undo that because I don't, it doesn't really do anything. All right, now I will go ahead and, oh, actually, <laughs> just thought I'd look at it. All right, I am going to add a little bit of sky here just because it's kind of blah. It's thinking about it. They've been loading pretty fast lately. I'm not sure why they're taking longer right now. Hmm. Let me go out and go back in. Actually, since I've gone out, I'm going to take it into sharpen. And then I'll go back in. Oh, yeah, I like that. It, it, it sharpened up the people nicely as well. So here's the original. Just a little too soft. And that sharpened it up. I actually really like that. All right, now I'm going to take it back into Neo. See if we can get Sky to work. Gotta tell you, I'm loving this mouse. Well, Sky does not want to work. It's kind of a bummer. And I'm wondering if it's that because it doesn't see much Sky. Yeah, it looks like it's it just doesn't see enough Sky. All right, so. Good to know. Um, I am going to cut this down a little bit more. And we can leave that little bit of drab sky up there. That's okay. I'm just going to dehaze that. And this was uh, just a day in a life in the middle of winter in the Soviet Union. Day in a life.
Oops. That's not what I wanted to bring up. Yeah, 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 I know. That's what I wanted to bring up. See how it looks. All right. Okay, thanks for joining me today. That was going to be my last photograph for today. Um, hopefully I will have uh, some more gadgets and things to show you. I may um, just show some other gadgets um, anyway. And some of the ones I've showed before, just, just because I, it's always nice to do that. And thank you for um, joining me. I will not be streaming on Sunday. I'm going to take a day off. But I will, I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace out. Thanks so much.